Hi guys, in response to lots of your requests, I've prepared today in this tutorial a full mark uh, response to paper two question two from the June 2018 exam. So this is the surfboard one. Um, so obviously with question two, um, it requires you to identify a number of differences, could be similarities, but um, does seem to be in the exam papers that have been so far, does seem to focus on the idea of differences. So it talks about writing a summary of what you understand the differences to be. Now it never uses this word um, in the question but really this is the key skill for you guys. It's the inference, the idea of can you read between the lines. Can you read something and say what does that suggest, what does it show, what does it imply. Now the difficulty in what you've got to make sure that you don't end up doing is making this a language question. So this is not a, a time where you zoom in on adjectives and adverbs. This is about you finding evidence. So things that you need are you do need to have some quotes and you need to make inferences about them in order to show what are some of the differences. So um, I'm sure that you will have seen this exam paper. I will put it up now and let you pause it if you need to read it. Um, so this is source A, which is um, the older text. Uh, okay. Um, oh no, big pardon. This is from the 1950s. Um, so it is the more modern text. And then here you have as your text from the 1900s, from 1875. So I'll just pause it there, and um, oh, you can just pause it there and read through it if you've not read it already. I guess you, a lot of you will have had this for mocks up to now. So this question, it's only worth eight marks, is the thing that I would also draw your attention to. Sometimes my students end up spending you know, 20 minutes on this because they're looking at both texts. It feels quite hard to do. Um, I had to go at this question earlier, wanted to show you a full mark response. Um, it took me about nine minutes to do, um, and obviously you will been a bit longer because you're not like a, a crusty old English teacher like me but even so be strict with yourself um, and if you find that you're doing you know more than about a side and a half um, you need to you need to stop so um, I've drawn together and said although so my style although the surfboards seem similar on the surface the Hawaiian ones are no more sophisticated than a primitively shaped plank of wood so it's one of my first pieces of evidence cut from the native breadfruit tree some more evidence whereas some of the Californian boards and newer, lighter materials such as balsa wood, suggesting the Americans want to develop their smoothness and surf performance. So I've got clear ev evidence here of an inference. So I've used some examples and I've got um, an inference and I'm saying how they're different. These have got primitively shaped wood, some of these have got newer balsa wood. There is real innovation. So this is another inference. This is, you know, in my own words, there's real innovation and the surfers value the technological advancements. The mahogany boards are now awkward and old fashioned, showing the disinterest in other methods or sorry, in older methods. So I've got, again, some more evidence um, and I've got here an inference and I've got here an inference. Okay. So, um, so I've got probably inference uh, times the second one and inference third one. So the Hawaiians continue to use natural materials to make their hand carved boards, so more evidence. This shows that tradition is incredibly important. Um, so again, another inference. So this is probably my fourth inference. The fact that they are made in the same way as a coffin lid adds to the idea that the surfboards are of the page, um, a huge part of their cultural identity. Again, another inference. Can't work out which inference this is. Uh, my fifth in inference. Okay. In Hawaii, the boards are not fashion accessories and are actually blessed before being used. The fact that there is a simple ritual, so carrying on with evidence, gives the boards an almost spiritual connection. That's another inference. In Sauce, the boards seem far less personal, so we've got a difference. 
Um, okay, I'm just going to put that difference. Um, they were simply wooden, a wooden framework and a plywood shell, which suggests that these were not items of great value. Neither does it seem that the slabs evidence had any sentimental value as they were being replaced by the much lighter versions. So I've got some more evidence, loads of evidence and plenty of inferences as I go through. So just really, it's about that. Um, and so, yeah, this would be a full eight out of eight mark response. So it's about um, you finding examples that you can just say, what does that show? And why is that different from something in the other text? Now, I've kind of done a bit of an interwoven approach, but what you might find easier and you can still get eight marks for is if you just summarize and do your inferences on text A and then do the same for source B, just, just saying how and why um, it might be different. So things that you'll, you'll notice, I've got no language analysis. I've got plenty of inferences. Now these can't be really super developed peel points. You don't have that time in, in an eight mark question to be able to do that. Sorry, that looks like a six. Um, got plenty of, of, uh, of inference and plenty of evidence, lots of examples. And what I do is just make connections to say how and why those two are different. Okay, so that's an eight mark uh, response, full eight mark. So therefore a grade nine response to that question. Thanks for watching.